Well, hello there and welcome to True Crime Bones with me your host Marissa, also known as Bones. In a small town called Stella near Freiburg, also known as Freiburg, South Africa, two girls, 17-year-old Charnel Hoog and 16-year-old Marna Engelbrecht were murdered in the early morning hours of the 26th of May 2018 at Stella Worst School, also known as Stella High, in the girls' hostel, which led to the arrest of the then 19-year-old Zander Pelsma and began what is now known as the Stella murder trial. That would send shockwaves throughout the whole of South Africa for the next two years. So I will be covering the Stella murders, discussing what happened that night, as well as going through confessions and testimonies made during the trial in a three-part series. So with that in mind, let's get into part one. Okay, so let's start with the victims. You know, who were these two girls whose lives were cut so short? The 17-year-old Charnel Hoog and 16-year-old Marna Engelbrecht, who had been best friends since kindergarten, attended the same high school, Stella School, and even shared a room in the girls' hostel. They were described as bubbly, friendly, caring, and would try anything to make a friend smile. They were also always together, you would almost never see one without the other. They would joke by saying that Marna was the smart one because she often got awards for her academic performances, while Charnel was the spontaneous one because of her warm and cheerful personality and the fact that she loved joking around. They also both loved animals. Marna especially loved horses and she and Charnel would go riding every weekend or every chance they got, actually. You know what? During this, I watched some of the TikTok videos and social media posts that were still available of them that they made. And man, you can just see the pure joy and love they had for life. They seemed so happy, having fun, making jokes, and just being silly. You know, like two sweet, loving, innocent girls, teenage girls, should be doing. And I also have to admit, it was hard seeing them smiling and hearing them laughing while knowing what happened to them. Charnel's body was found hanging by a nylon rope from the hostel staircase and Marna's body was found on the floor with a handbag strap around her neck in the upstairs bathroom the girls hostel. A scene made to look like a multiple suicide and a desperate attempt by Zander to hide the fact that he murdered the girls. The best friends who were always together ended up being murdered together and a week later they were mourned together sharing a memorial service. Friends and loved ones wrote letters to the girls that were published in order of the servers beside a collage of photos of the pair in happier times and this was handed out to everybody who attended the service. I'm just going to read you some of the notes that was published during the service. One read, a whole community is poorer, darker without your smiles. Another read, when we looked at you, we saw the epitome of perfection. All you gave was smiles and kindness. And then lastly, Chanel's mother, Sonia's letter read, My heart is broken. My child, you had the most beautiful laugh, the most beautiful eyes, and you were a beautiful person in and out. My love, you will never be alone because Marna is there with you. You will always be happy and safe. 
Okay, so now let's move on and talk a little bit about Zander Bylsma. Now, who is Zander? Zander, who was Monty and Moshe Bylsma's only child, was born on the 13th of May, 1999. And they were described as a good and loving Christian family. Monty Bylsma, Zander's father, was described by locals as a kind and generous man who would help anyone in need. And his mother, Moshe, as a kind and caring person, who was also very protective over Zander. Growing up, Zander never had to want for anything, as his parents gave him as much as they possibly could. In fact, the locals would go on to say that Moshe, Zander's mother, spoiled him way too much. And that is something that never changed, even after Monty and Moshe ended up getting a divorce and later on remarrying different people. Sander was an avid hunter who had been go going on hunting adventures ever since he was a child, as well as participating in shooting competitions alongside his father Monty. Zander mostly hunted game, but in some cases jackals as well. But this was only when farmers in the surrounding areas would pay him to kill these jackals, who were seen as predators in those areas, in order to prevent them from preying on their livestock. Zander would also go on to share photos of him posing with the animals he killed and guns, which he loved guns as well, on Facebook and you know like a trophy situation guarding the posing with a dead animal that is just you know what never mind let me just move on with that one Zander would also go on to attend Stella Wurschkel high school but was suspended during his last year in 2017 after he was caught sneaking out of the boys hostel to go and visit the girls in the girls' hostel. Zander was also played first team rugby in his last year at Stella. And okay, I was surprised by that fact because if you look at him, he is this tall and extremely slender guy, you know, not the rugby type at all. Anyway, so Trying to get a basic description of the type of person Zander initially was and also how he was perceived proved to be quite a difficult task as people would go on to describe Zander in so many different ways. So that's why in an effort to hopefully, like really hopefully, make things easier, I've decided to just go through all of these descriptions made about him and just, you know, throw them all together. Because honestly, that's the easy, easier thing I can think of. Because they are so different. Anyway, let's get into that. Zander was, this, was a recluse who spent most of his time hunting animals. A tall, quiet hunter with a passion for camouflage clothing. And rifles. One resident said that he was always kind and never talked back to anybody. He didn't have many friends and he never saw or talked badly about people. While another resident said that he was problematic and had a temper problem. A friend of Zander said that he mostly kept himself especially after his best friend had gone to work on a farm in the US. He also he was also described as a well-mannered boy, quiet but always friendly and never caused any trouble. While on the other hand, he was described as being obsessive and controlling. Ronnie Hoog, Charnel's father, said, Sander was a pleasant to have around, polite, friendly and he seemed to worship the ground my daughter to walk on. In fact, he practically worshipped Charnel completely. But it's only after everything that I started hearing stories of how things really were when they were alone. Zander was also known for not being able to control his anger, which made him prone to outbursts. A cashier at the Stella shop 
said that Zander had anger issues. And she also said, it's unfortunate that people had failed to recognize the red flags in time. It's like no one cared about him. And look now, what has happened? People talked behind his back about his anger issues and no one thought of helping him. Okay, so there's the description of what type of person he is, well, kind of. But I just have to add, with the last description regarding the woman from Estella store saying that people talk behind his back instead of trying to help him, well, I get, you know, helping someone isn't always that easy depending on the situation, but if she is so invested in the fact that someone could have said something, why didn't she say something? Okay, so now let's talk about how Zander, Charnel and Marna were connected, as well as what was the cause that led up to them being brutally murdered. As we know, Zander, Charnel and Marna all attended the same school, and it was here, of course, where Zander and Charnel met. Marna was actually Zander's second cousin, but they never really hanged out with each other, if I can put it like that. Basically, they just knew of each other, and that is, that was it. It's only when Chanel, who was in grade 10 at the time, and Zander and Matric started dating in March of 2017, that a family-type relationship formed between the two cousins, which obviously didn't last very long. Anyway, Chanel and Zander's relationship seemed great at first. You know, the typical, madly enough, teenage romance, complete with them sharing photos of them together, as well as love notes on each other's social media pages. Chanel was Zander's big love, or like he put it, the love of his life. One of Zander's friends actually said that he was very, very fond of her, and he would do anything for her. Like if Lali, which was Chanel's nickname, said, Zander, I need you now. He would immediately and without hesitation get into his truck and drive the 100 kilometers from his father's farm in Lona to go to her. But that all changed in the beginning of the month of May 2018, when Chanel, who had tried leaving Zander in the past, but was always unsuccessful, was finally able and success to successfully break up with Zander after dating for almost a year. The reason why Chanel broke up with Zander was because of his controlling nature and his constant need for wanting to know where she was, what she was doing and with whom at all times. And also the reason why she was unsuccessful the first few times was whenever Chanel tried to leave him, he would literally drive to her parents' house where she of course was, and threatened her by saying things like she would regret it and that her parents would also regret it. Which ultimately led to her taking him back each time. But this time around, things were different. As Chanel already met, another, met and started dating someone else. His name is Brandon Victor. And the two met at school, as they both attended Stella Wurst School. Brandon even played rugby for the first team for the high school. And Marna was so excited for the new couple, as she didn't want Chanel to get back together with Zander. In fact, she straight up said that she would not allow it, ever. While Zander, on the other hand, couldn't handle the fact that Chanel not only left him, but was able to move on with her life. So it wasn't long after Chanel had broken up with him that both her and Marna started getting threatening messages from him. Zander even went as far as phoning Brandon and threatening him in a desperate attempt to get him, Brandon, to break up with Chanel. Which, again, obviously didn't work. 
But unfortunately, Chanel, Marna, and even Brandon didn't take these threads seriously and basically just brushed them off as if nothing ever happened, which enraged Xander even more. And by now, I'm pretty sure that I don't really need to explain to you why Xander committed these murders. I mean, if you take a step back and just look at it all, you know, all the details, you will see that this picture pretty much paints itself. Now, let's get into the how. And when I say how, I mean, how was Xander able to get into the hostel and murder these two girls without anyone noticing it? Well, it's because they were murdered during the school weekend. The school week ended on Friday the 25th of May 2018. So everyone went home for the weekend, except for Charnel and Marna and the boys from the Stella Wurschkel's first rugby team, as they were scheduled to play a rugby match the following day in a small town called Koster, and Charnel and Marna wanted to go with them, since Charnel's new boyfriend, Brandon, was on the rugby team. Now this also meant that, except for Christelle Juister, the hostel matron, the two girls were basically all alone in the hostel. Christelle Juister also testified during the trial that the doors leading to the girls' hostel are usually locked in the evenings, but that evening it was not. Of course, Chanel Mar and Marna asked her not to lock it. According to her, they said that someone was going to bring them clothes during the night, and that is why they asked that the doors should not be locked. Christelle then left the girls and went to her room, which was on the ground floor of the hostel, and went to bed at approximately 10 o'clock that evening. It was about 5.30 a.m. the following morning when Christelle decided to go and wake up the two girls. And that is when, on her way to their room, she saw Charnel hanging from the staircase. Christelle then called Mr. Bredenkamp, who was the hostel caretaker, and he then went on to call the police, who arrived shortly after. And as the police, who would go on to discover Marna's lifeless body in the bathroom. So now you see, Zana was able to get into the hostel because the doors were unlocked and he was able to murder the two girls without being noticed because there was basically no one there. Well, that is it for the first episode in this three-part series. So, to give you a little bit of idea what you can expect in the second episode, I will be discussing, well, basically go through testimonies made during this trial, quite a few actually, and then maybe a confession, maybe not. You will have to wait and see. And then also, I will be posting photos of Zander, Charnel and Marna on my Instagram page, truecrime.bones, just so you know who I'm talking about. I mean, putting a face to the name changes everything. And I would just like to say thank you for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed it and yeah, ta-ta!